Hello and welcome to World News Program streaming to you live on All24 News. I'm your host, Kirin Zachary, and up next are the top stories. Ninety-two Palestinians were killed in nine new Zionist massacres in the Gaza Strip, overshadowing the arrival of humanitarian aid following a four-month blockade. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry emphasizes that while aid is important, it cannot replace the urgent need for a ceasefire. That's next. Also coming up, Rafah rescue efforts are hindered by bombings and supply shortages, while the World Health Organization, along with Jordan and Germany, are cautioning against Zionist ground invasion into Rafah, as Sisi for his part vows no Palestinian displacement to Egypt. Also ahead, Human Rights Watch urges punishment and arms ban on Zionist occupation. Satellite images show Gaza Strip division by Zionist buffer zone construction. And the Russian presidential election turnout surpasses 73% amidst accusations of Western interference and Moscow Kiev exchange strikes on final voting day. Stay tuned, we've got all the details right after the break. Hello again and welcome to the program. First off in our news, 92 Palestinians were killed in nine new attacks by Zionist forces in Gaza within just 24 hours. The government in Gaza reported victims still trapped under debris and on roads, with rescue efforts hindered by the Zionist restrictions. At dawn on the 163rd day of aggression, dozens of Palestinians were killed and injured in a new massacre in central Gaza, adding to other recent attacks by the occupying forces. The total death toll from these incidents exceeds 90 martyrs. Here's Zahra Frajani with the report. As the holy month of Ramadan enters its first week, the Gaza Strip remains trapped in a cycle of relentless Zionist bombings. Each dawn brings fresh tragedy as civilian homes are targeted without mercy. The recent Zionist strike hit the city of Deir el-Balah in the central Gaza Strip. While two families were about to gather to have their pre-dawn suhoor meal, the houses were bombed and shattered to the ground, resulting in the death of 12 members. The house was destroyed, as you see, killing about 12 people, mostly women and children. The Israelis claim that the number of dead women and children is exaggerated. Let them go to the hospital and check with their own eyes. This new massacre adds to the already staggering toll, wiping out entire families, including infants, women and the elderly. There are no more children in Gaza. If we want to rebuild Gaza, it will take us many years. Look at the houses that were destroyed. There is nothing left. She's dead. All that's left is her dress. It's the greatest gift she gave us. In the past hours alone, the occupation forces unleashed nine horrific massacres across different parts of the Strip, leaving over 90 civilians dead. The aftermath reveals a scene of horror, with dozens still trapped under the rubble of destroyed buildings. Wow. Observers fear that the bloodshed in Gaza shows no signs of abating. The occupation forces seem determined to exterminate more civilians, perhaps in a bid to erase their defeat on October 7th. In similar news, and on Sunday evening, six trucks carrying humanitarian aid reached Anruwa war housings in northern Gaza for the first time around four months. The aid, including flour and food supplies, traveled via Salah Haddin Street from the south to the north of Gaza. 
It was deposited in honor of warehouses in Beit Lahia, Beit Hanun, and Jabalia for distribution to residents in the northern area. We hope that this war will end, that we will enjoy security, that my husband will return to me, and that they will provide food for the people. And in this context, the Palestinian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has urged for the opening of all crossings and the continuous flow of aid into Gaza via land, sea and air in a statement. On Sunday, the ministry highlighted the insufficiency of the current aid compared to the substantial humanitarian needs in Gaza, including water, medicine, health facilities and electricity, while acknowledging recent aid efforts the ministry emphasized that humanitarian aid should not replace an immediate ceasefire and the cessation of Zionist aggression. The aid that has reached Gaza City and the northern Gaza Strip is insufficient compared to the huge humanitarian needs of civilians in that area. Therefore, we demand the opening of all crossings, the continued flow of aid by land, sea and air, and linking the ongoing relief campaigns to a real international effort that leads to an immediate ceasefire and an end to the Israeli aggression against our people in Gaza. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, underscored the critical importance of delivering humanitarian aid to Gaza, emphasizing its delivery by land. In a Sunday post on the X platform, the UN agency stated that delivering aid via land is the most effective and safest method. UNRWA emphasized that ensuring the safe, sustainable and unhindered arrival of aid is a matter of life and death amidst the famine. The ongoing indiscriminate bombing by Zionist forces in Rafah, southern Gaza, home to over one and a half million Palestinians, has intensified the challenges for rescue teams. These teams are struggling to provide relief to the displaced population amidst a shortage of medicine and medical supplies. Usama Ayadi has the details. 163 days of relentless bombardment have left Palestinians in the Gaza Strip reeling. The brunt of this onslaught falls heavily in the southern regions. Now a major population center after thousands were displaced from the north. In the latest escalation, the Babidi Junction in the south faced intense targeting, with residential buildings taking direct heads, resulting in multiple casualties. Despite the valiant efforts of rescue workers, many remain trapped under the rubble, and the exact toll still unknown. They started shelling us. They had no mercy on us. Even when the aid trunks arrived, they slaughtered us. They had no mercy whatsoever. They slaughtered everybody. They killed my brother. More than 50 martyrs were just laying on the ground, torn into pieces. Emergency responders from the Palestinian Red Crescent rushed to transport several victims to the central hospital following a direct shelling on a refugee camp. However, the rescue efforts were impeded by the vast debris and the sheer number of casualties. Yes, I was there. What happened was that people were waiting for the aid trucks to arrive. They started firing tank shells at all the people. The plane was shooting and the drones were shooting and they hit all the people. The Zionist onslaught has already claimed over 31,500 lives, predominantly those of women and children. Beyond the staggering death toll, the Strip lies devastated, with homes destroyed and the population displaced, plunging the territory into a dire hunger crisis. In other news, the World Health Organization urged the Zionist entity to halt its ground attack on Rafah. Director Adan Gabriel has expressed deep concern via Twitter, noting reports of a planned assault on Rafah. He highlighted the city's dense population, lack of safe havens, and strained health facilities. Gabriel also warned that escalating violence in Rafah would result in significant casualties and suffering. He appealed to the Zionist entity to refrain from advancing with the operation. And on Sunday, Jordan and Germany jointly warned about the potential humanitarian crisis exacerbation resulting from a Zionist invasion of Rafah in Gaza. The caution was issued during a meeting between a Jordanian King Abdullah II and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Aqaba, Jordan. The Royal Court statement emphasized King Abdullah's second call for urgent international action to secure an immediate and lasting ceasefire in Gaza.
Additionally, the king reiterated Jordan's rejection of any attempts to forcibly displace Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, as well as efforts to provide them. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi reiterated on Sunday that Egypt will not permit the displacement of Palestinians onto its territory. He made the statement during a meeting with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen at the Egyptian-European Summit in Cairo. A statement from the Egyptian presidential spokesman's official Facebook page quoted the Sisi stressing the importance of a ceasefire in Gaza and affirming Egypt's rejection of any attempts to forcibly relocate Palestinians to its lands. We've also agreed with EU leaders on rejecting the Israeli military operation in Rafah, which would double the humanitarian catastrophe that civilians in the Gaza Strip are suffering from, in addition to the effects of that operation on liquidating Palestinian cards, which Egypt outright rejects. Egypt reiterates its total rejection of many attempts by Israel to forcibly displace the Palestinian people from their occupied lands since 1967 in the Gaza Strip, the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Human Rights Watch reiterated its call for international sanctions on the Zionist occupation, including an arms embargo, in a statement on Sunday. The organization condemned the use of starvation as a war tactic by the occupation, labeling it as war crimes. Media reports based on satellite images reveal that Zionist forces are bulldozing agricultural lands, demolishing homes and destroying infrastructure in Gaza just to establish a buffer zone. This plan aims to shrink the Gaza Strip by 16%. Despite opposition from several countries, including the United States, these actions are still ongoing, exacerbating the history of genocide in Gaza perpetrated by the Zionist occupation forces. To other news now, Algeria strongly condemned the project aimed at confiscating the property of its embassy in Morocco, denouncing it as a grave violation of international laws and customs that mandate the protection of diplomatic representations. The Algerian Foreign Ministry affirmed that the government will respond to these provocations using all available legal and diplomatic means, including recourse to the United Nations. The statement emphasized that such actions by Morocco deviate from the obligations outlined in the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, which require the host country to respect and safeguard embassies on its soil under all circumstances. The Algerian army emphasized the paramount importance of maintaining high morale among its members prioritizing it as key, a, a key focus. During a visit to the Air Force's headquarters on Sunday, Chief of Staff Army General Saeed Ngriha highlighted that morale serves as a measure of development and a source of strength and victories for all armies. <laughs> Maintaining the moral of individuals at its highest levels is a top priority for us in the People's National Army because we are fully confident that the source of the development of armies in general and the foundation of their strength and victory specifically lie in their strong moral. Therefore, fulfilling responsibilities is not only related to operational, cognitive and material motivation skills, but rather the most important fundamental work is the military's belief in its cause at all times. The Algerian army general also emphasized that achieving superiority and effectiveness depends on successful leadership of personnel, particularly in light of the significant challenges posed by the current international and regional situation. <laughs> The 
awareness of the sensitivity of the tasks and awareness of their national purposes, lofty goals, are among the constant and certain factors that are sufficient to give the military the moral capabilities that guarantee the People's National Army to continue its victorious march on the path of development and modernization, especially in the midst of the current international and regional situations that require everyone to show more determination, firmness, and awareness of the serious challenges at hand. And in other international news, on Sunday evening, the military council in Niger abruptly terminated the military cooperation agreement with the United States, declaring the presence of American forces on Nigerian soil illegal and a violation of constitutional and democratic norms. Government spokesman Amadou Abdurrahman stated in a video announcement that the American military presence in Niger is unauthorized leading to or leading Yame to cancel the agreement immediately. The agreement pertained to the status of U.S. military personnel and civilian employees within Niger's Ministry of Defense. This decision follows a three-day visit by senior American officials to the capital, Niamey. On cooperation between the two countries, in particular military cooperation and the fight against terrorists, the U.S. presence on the territory of the Republic of Niger is illegal and violates all the constitutional and democratic rules which would require the sovereign people, in particular through its elected representatives, to be consulted on the installation of the foreign army on its territory. On Sunday, the Russian Central Election Commission announced that voter turnout in the presidential elections reached 73.33% by 8.24 p.m. Moscow time on the third and final day of voting. This election marked the first time that voting extended over three days. Four candidates are vying for the presidency. Incumbent President Vladimir Putin as an independent candidate, along with three candidates from parties represented in Parliament, Leonid Slotsky and Vladislav Davankov, and Nikolai Kartinov. The eighth presidential election in the Russian Federation since the dissolution of the Soviet Union concluded after three days of voting. Moscow accused Western countries of attempting to interfere in directing eligibility and even hacking the remote voting system. Here is Selman Asib with the story. Russian voters turned out in significant numbers at polling stations with the option of electronic remote voting to elect their president from a poll of four candidates. In a historic move, over 112 million Russian voters were granted an extended voting period of three days, a measure implemented to ensure accessibility and participation. Everything is fine. The police and security authorities are keen on the safe conduct of the voting process. They check the authenticity of the identification documents and verify them. I live in this area, and so far, I have not noticed any attempts to disrupt the voting. When we go to the polling stations and vote, we feel like we have taken another step towards democracy. At the present time, we are at the crossroads between democracy and capitalism. And I also do not know what comes next. But everyone who wants to serve democracy must pull a small piece of paper in the box. While the presidential election held great importance domestically, they also garnered attention abroad, particularly amidst the backdrop of the ongoing Russian-Ukraine conflict. The West criticism of the Russian elections, questioning their credibility, contrasts with the perspective of many Russians. The electoral process went normally. We do not care about Western criticism. We came here to vote for our country. All we care about is our country. Uh, I think it was done well, uh, I liked it, uh, I felt safe, and everything went really good. I think that we will know about that after the election is finished, uh, and we will never know if it's true or if it's not true, but it's important to uh, have your voice and give your vote to somebody or not give your vote to anybody.
As soon as the polls closed, early returns painted a familiar picture. Vladimir Putin set to extend his nearly quarter-century rule for another six years. Russia's Central Election Commission announced Putin's victory with an overwhelming 87.97% of the vote. The final day of the Russian presidential elections witnessed significant hostilities between Russia and Ukraine involving the use of drones and missiles. The Russian Ministry of Defense reported the interception of 35 Ukrainian drones targeting the Russian Belgorod region. Conversely, Ukrainian forces claimed that Russian air attacks caused damage and destruction to several industrial buildings in Odessa. The air defense forces intercepted and destroyed 35 UAVs over Moscow province, four UAVs, Belgorod, three UAVs, Kaluga, two UAVs, Oriol, one UAV, Rostov, one UAV, Yaroslav, four UAVs, and Kursk, three UAVs, Krasnodar Territory, 70 UAVs. To the United States now, former U.S. President Donald Trump issued a warning of a potential bloodbath if he were to lose the upcoming presidential elections just four days after securing the Republican Party's nomination. In response, the Biden campaign criticized Trump's remarks, characterizing them as a continuation of his refusal to accept the results of the 2020 election and escalating threats of political violence, Islam said reports. As the race for the presidential rematch between Donald Trump and Joe Biden intensifies, both candidates have clinched another delegates to secure their party nominations. Trump speaking at a campaign rally in Dayton, Ohio, in support of Republican Senate candidate Bernie Moreno, took aim at Biden once again. He criticized Biden alleging political prosecutions and painting grim picture of the country under another term of Biden's leadership. Remember this, Joe Biden is a great threat to our democracy. He's a tremendous threat to our democracy. His incompetence is the number one reason. Also, he uses the Justice Department, the FBI, to go after his political opponent. Happens to be me. How are we doing? And he's driven my numbers through the roof. Do it one or two more times. Let's, how about a couple of more indictments? Surprisingly, Trump also warned of a potential chaos if he were to lose, casting doubts on the future on the U.S. elections. If this election, if this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. Does that make sense? I don't think you're going to have another election in this country if we don't win this election. I don't think you're going to have another election, or certainly not an election that's meaningful. The Biden-Harris campaign swiftly responded, accusing Trump of inciting political violence with his remarks. Meanwhile, Trump is delaying trial dates for four criminal indictments he faces maintaining his innocence. This is who Donald Trump is, a loser who gets beat by over 7 million votes and then instead of appealing to a wider mainstream audience, doubles down on his threats of a political violence. It said, he wants another January 6th, but the American people are going to give him another electoral defeat this November because they continue to reject his extremism, his affection for violence and his thirst for revenge. The intensity of the race is escalating with observers highlighting the uncertainty surrounding another Biden mandate and anticipating legal battles for Trump. However, one thing is undeniable. The U.S. is gearing up for a contentious and pivotal contest ahead. Well, time for the news in brief with Sofian Kinturi now. Italy's Coast Guard said more than 900 migrants were rescued in four separate operations in the Strait of Sicily on Saturday, while Libyan authorities said that they had rescued nearly 600 migrants from other boats, one of which sank. Responders sprang into action amid snowdrifts in northern China's Inner Mongolia, saving over 200 individuals and rescuing more than 100 vehicles stranded in various parts of the autonomous region Friday to Saturday. Port-au-Prince streets burned, with barricades blocking roads and frustration mounts over Haiti's ongoing lack of stability, despite Prime Minister Ariel Henry saying he would step down as Prime Minister. Haitians said they will still face difficulties and call on politicians to organize the country. Russians celebrated Maslinitsa Folk Festival 
by setting fire on giant wooden structure on Saturday at an open-air art park in central Russia. Nikola Linivest Art Park in Kaluga region is famous for burning massive wooden structures to celebrate the start of spring, each year presenting a different theme of celebration. Well, the end of our program for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, have a good one.